All right, continuing our discussion of univariate hypothesis testing, let's take a look at a hypothesis test for the proportion. All right, let's just jump right into an example, and then we'll work through the assumptions and so forth as we're working the example. A community college is investigating the proportion of students who complete their two-year degrees and continue on to attend a four-year school. Historically, that proportion has been 23%. Suppose a survey of 137 recent graduates showed 44 had gone on to a four-year school. Do the data suggest the number of students going on to a four-year school has increased? Now, this is a little bit tricky. Does it suggest the number of students? Well, the number of students, we don't want to take literal there, because the number of students is really not nearly as relevant as a proportion. If you have 50 graduates and... 40 of them go on, and then the next year you have 200 graduates and 45 go on, hello, the numbers increase, but proportionally it hasn't. So we're, we're really talking about here, but it says, does it suggest the number of students, what we're really getting at is, is the proportion. It doesn't come out and say proportion, but that's exactly what we're getting at. We need to put it in a context that's understandable. Well, first of all, 44 divided by 137 is 32%. Uh, so my sample statistic, p hat, is 44 over 137, which is, I just said, 0 0.3212. Historically, it's been 23%. That's suggesting that pi is 0.23. So this is kind of good. Our sample statistic value is bigger than the believed pi, so that makes sense to go ahead and check to see if this is by chance. The two values are close together, relatively close in terms of standard deviations. Or is it really suggesting that the proportion has, in fact, increased? Are these two values far apart? So if this sample proportion is actually less than 0.23, like 0.21 or 0.20, I'll say done. There's not a prayer showing that the true proportion is going up if the sample proportion has gone down. So story be over. Okay, I'm going to take a look at these steps uh, similar to what we did before. First of all, what's the parameter? Well, if you hadn't noticed it, I wrote it right there. So it's kind of hard to miss. The parameter is pi, which is true proportion. We're looking for an estimate of what the true proportion of students that leave the or graduate from the community college and go on to a four-year school. Now, what's the null alternative hypothesis? The null hypothesis, I'm going to say H naught, pi, remember the hypothesis statements is always about the parameter values, pi equals 0.23. Let me double check that. Yes, 0.23. Um, that's saying there's no change. The alternative hypothesis would be pi is greater than 0.23. Notice my 0.32 doesn't show up. My sample statistic value does not show up in my null or alternative hypothesis, nor does the symbol. And alpha, I'm going to set alpha at 0.05. Now, I want to identify the appropriate test statistic. This should be a z. Just like we did a, um, use a z, for our z distribution for a confidence interval, it should be a z here, um, if all the assumptions are satisfied. Now, do you remember the assumptions, or think about the assumptions for when we did a confidence interval? It's the exact same thing here. The assumptions are exactly the same. So, what we need to show is that p hat, the distribution of p hat, is distributed normal. And that's going to be reasonable if n times p hat is at least five and n times one minus p hat is also at least five and also um, n's in itself is at least 20. Although I believe I mentioned this before, um, I don't, the n greater than 20 I don't think is that big of a deal. Uh, what's really important is these two guys. Okay, so uh, what do we have here? Well, n times p hat, we can think of this as a number of successes. Well, what was p hat? Let me write that over here. p hat was 44 over 137. Well, the number of successes is 44. So n times p hat is 44. And yeah, that's definitely greater than 5. No problem there. 
n times 1 minus p hat is everything else. That's going to be the same as 137 minus 44, which is what, 93? Um, yeah, 93 failures. Is, that's greater than 5. And if you're looking at this last thing here, the end's 137, that's definitely greater than 20. So our assumptions are satisfied. We're in good shape there. So now what I'm going to do is a hypothesis test for the proportion. And specifically, I'm going to use a one prop Z test. And when I say specifically one prop Z test, I'm really talking about specifically the command for the calculator. This is just a Z test uh, in any other terms. So let's switch to the calculator. If I go to stat, test, and go down to right there, option five, one prop Z test, P naught. This is the way the calculator asks for pi. What is the value for the proportion under the null hypothesis? What was 0.23? X. That's my numerator. That's how many successes I had. 44. N was 137. The alternative hypothesis, we're trying to see if there's evidence to suggest it's actually greater than 0.23. If I calculate now, I get a p-value, and the p-value is 0.00. Five, six. So switching back to screen here, I'm going to say my p-value equals um, see, 0 0.0056. I am going to compare this with alpha. It's less than alpha, so my decision will be to reject. And obviously, when I say reject, I'm not going to say it here, but when we say reject, reject H0 is implied, because we're only rejecting the null hypothesis, or we're failing to reject the null hypothesis. We never reject the alternative hypothesis, and we never fail to reject the alternative hypothesis. So here, um, this last step would be to state your conclusion in English. And in English, I'd simply say there is... enough evidence... to suggest and I'm going to say proportion of students going on to a four-year school or college whoops if I can spell school right is um, increasing. And perhaps it would actually be better to say that it did increase. We don't know if it's still continuing to increase or not. The way I said that, it may imply to some way that it in, is increasing. Um, we're continuing to increase. I, I don't know until next year to we check this again. That's it. That's all we're going to do for hypothesis test for proportion. This is